When you take a stone and throw it up, it falls back. Gravity. What goes up comes back down. Hmm, not necessarily. Gravity, which is an all-attractive force, becomes weaker as you go farther away from Earth. But how much weaker? If you go twice the distance, gravity becomes four times smaller. And if you go thrice farther, nine times smaller, and so on. This is not linear decrease. We call this as an inverse square law, which is explained in detail here. Anywho, so when you throw this stone up with some modest speed, what usually happens is that the stone is so close to Earth that gravity virtually remains the same the famous 9.8, and so the speed reduces and ultimately becomes zero and then crashes back. However, if you throw with large enough speeds, I'm talking in the order of about 5 to 6 kilometers per second here, and neglecting atmospheric interactions, the stone does travel distances where now inverse square law starts kicking in. So in this case, the speed decreases, but gravity also decreases, and eventually, again, gravity wins, and of course, the stone crashes back. But if that stone was given a big enough kick, at least 11.2 kilometers per second from Earth's surface, then we see something awesome. The speed of the stone decreases, yeah, but gravity also decreases such that the speed would never, ever, ever become zero. Gravity loses, or in other words, the stone has now escaped the gravitational pull of Earth. The minimum speed for this to happen is what we call as the escape speed. And how do we derive the expression for this escape speed? Clearly, the distance traveled is infinity, the time taken is infinity, and the forces are changing. Not to worry. We can use the conservation of mechanical energy, which I explain in detail over here, and talk about how gravity is a conservative force. So let's say the stone is kicked from the surface, S. When kicked with escape speed, it just escapes Earth's gravity, or in mathematical term, reaches infinity and stops. Invoking conservation of mechanical energy at point S and infinity, we have potential energy at S plus kinetic energy at S equals potential energy at infinity, which is of course zero, plus kinetic energy at infinity, which is again zero because it goes to infinity and stops. Substitute the terms and rearrange to get the V escape as the square root of 2 gm by r. Put in that equation the gravitational constant, the mass of the Earth, the radius of the Earth, and out pops the famous 11.2 kilometers per second. If you calculate the escape speed on the surface of Moon, you get about 2.2 kilometers per second. Our atmosphere has an average speed of about half kilometers per second at normal conditions of pressure and temperature. To trap this atmosphere for billions of years, the escape speed must be at least 5 to 6 times more, which is about 2.53 kilometers per second. Hence, Earth can easily trap this atmosphere, while the Moon cannot. To give you something more for your money, <laughs> what if we shrink our Earth or any planet, keeping all its mass, compressing it? Then clearly, since R decreases, the escape speed increases. And it is interesting to note, if this escape speed becomes more than the speed of light in vacuum, which is C, which is 300,000 kilometers per second, then light cannot escape this object then our Earth would officially become a black hole. So by making V escape equal C, you can easily calculate how small Earth should be to become a black hole. If you plug in, you get about 9 millimeters, or you have to shrink Sun to about 3 kilometers, which is also not possible, or shrink yourself to about 0.000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000